in my life. Okay. My cam my camera is on. Okay, great. Ah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My apologies for my lateness. I was having a lot of technical difficulties. Um, is everybody there? Can everybody hear me? Can I get something in the chat to know that you guys are out there? Let's see. You're hearing me? You're good? Okay, great. Lovely. So it is indeed a, a pleasure to be here with you guys today. Um, again, my apologies on my lateness. Um, my, this internet at the office was really playing today. Um, so yes, so I'm here and I think we're going to have a, a nice informative time. I am very pleased to, to be able to share with you guys some do's and don'ts as well as how do I make or how do we get to make this a business? Um, I don't know how many songwriters we have in here today. Can, can, I, can I get some sort of feedback on that? How many songwriters do we have here today? Um, I'm waiting to see. Yes, 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 yes. Hi, Lisa. What's up, Aaron? Um, all right, so, okay, good, nice. We're here. <laughs> all right, so, so some do's and some do's and don'ts, and just some all-around knowledge, just to really share around to make sure that we're doing the right things to to maintain this thing that we love as a as a as a viable career. Let me start off by first saying that. It's indeed possible, you know, um, there's millions of success stories. I wouldn't go as far to say that I am the most successful, but I have been able to make my career and my, my passion for music, my, um, my, my, this is what feeds me, this is what feeds my family, and it has been doing very, very well. Um, with all the knowledge that I have gained in my travels um, and just being mentored by all the right people. You know, I've, I've picked up a few things along the way that has helped me make this a success. You know, success for different people might be different things. It might be the accolades and all of that. But I think once you are able to, the, 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 the mere fact that you are able to make a living from it, I think that is success in itself. You know, you could let me know if you agree or not. You know, um, so let's get started. I am Daryl Jovi, as you guys would know, those who don't know, I am a professional songwriter, um, predominantly known in the Caribbean um, region for my work in soca music. But I have done a lot of stuff outside of soca music as well. Um, a lot of pop, a lot of R&B, a lot of work for TV and film, um, what we call sync. And um, I'm really just excited to share with you guys today. The, the fact that I was rushing with the internet kind of threw me off. So let me compose myself and let me jump in with it. All right. So what I would like to start by saying is that um, Music to me is one of the most powerful forces on the planet, right? I don't know if you guys agree or not. And it connects all of us, like it connects all of us. And we as music makers and songwriters and creatives, at some point in our lives fell in love with this amazingly beautiful, mysterious thing that we call music. And we started paying closer attention to it than the average listener. Right, And at some point later down, we decided that this was the thing that we are going to do to make a living from it. And, you know, so we, we took that journey and now we have to find ways to make it make sense. 
and it's possible, you know, it is possible. But sometimes I call it the curse of the creative mind. Sometimes we get so lost in creating and, and making these things up that we lose sight of the business side of things. And the business side should not be neglected because then you'd have a bunch of broke musicians and songwriters and producers running around, you know, and we don't want that. You know, it, this, it has to make sense, right? But a songwriter's business plan is sometimes the last thing on their mind. You know, um, I could speak specifically for songwriters. Um, I do not know everything regarding music, but I haven't, and I have not made it yet. But I think just being able to make a living from it, you know, is an amazing thing. It's a miracle in a sense. You know, just the fact that you could, you can make something up in your mind and people have an appreciation for it and a value for it that you get now, you can now earn a living from it, right? So how do we turn our passion for songwriting and, and just being a creative in general um, in the music industry? How do we turn it into a business? Um, and I had to ask myself this, where do we start, right? Where do we start? You all with me? Where do we start? Um, and I had to, I basically had to, to say this. Um, I think we start with, I think we start with talent and then we move on to building a catalog and pitching ownership, paperwork and opportunities. And those are the things that I'd like to cover today, all right? So, Let's just jump into it, all right? So let's start with, with the talent, all right? How do, you know, how do you know that your talent is, is something worthy to be paid for? How do you get to make a, an income off of your talent? Because um, to me, talent is, art is relative, all right? Art is relative, it's opinions, it's perspective. But at some point, you have to know within yourself that, yeah, this is just as good. And I could really do something with this. And um, I could give you some insight as to where it started with me. I think, um, now I've, I've always been doing music. I've always been a, a singer, always been creating since a, since a child. Um, and as, as weird as it might sound, it starts with other people sometimes believing in your gift too, you know. Um, and, and I think that's sometimes where it starts. But you have to be able to decipher um, whether my talent is worth something or not. Now, we, I think we all have talent and it can be nurtured, you know. But um, how do you know that it's good, you know? So I would say you get feedback, you put yourself out there, you get out of your comfort zones. And at the end of the day, you have to believe in the product that you're creating. Um, and in terms of it, it being a written song, I think one of the main ways for you to know whether it's good or not is to some degree, you have to compare to some degree. I think we, we would call it referencing. You know, line up your product with the product of some of your favorite songs and see if it matches lyrically, content-wise, if you're just as clever as, as some of your favorite songs. Sometimes you start with breaking down what are some of your favorite songs. You know what I mean? So you start with that. Are you guys hearing me well? Because I know I didn't, I didn't put on my, my AirPods. I don't know if I should. Um, could you let me know if you guys are hearing me good? Yeah? Are you? Are you hearing me good? All right. So, okay, all clear. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. So, I think I, I'm going to let me put on my AirPods. 
just so that I could kind of zone into this properly. All right, so good. So, so you there's a there's some level of of comparison. You know, you have to reference your music at some point to to be able to see if it could stand up with what's out there. You know, and if you think you have a good enough air and could be as unbiased as possible, because I mean, it's your work. So sometimes we tend to be very biased. But if you think you could put yourself in a position in a middle ground to judge your work as you were just a fan, you know, just a regular fan of, of, of music, if you think you could line your stuff up and give it a fair judge, that's a good place to start. With respect to talent, I think some of the key things to, 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 to do as well is you need to pay attention to the quality. And that's what I said. That's why I said um, we need to be able to reference it and line it up with other work to see if it could indeed stand up, right? Because it's very easy for, for someone to say, yeah, my work just as good. But if you're biased, then, you know, um, it could tend to be a little difficult. So that's where the feedback comes into. Um, things to also make sure that you are taking notice of when it comes to talent is your, your appeal, right? Do you have that commercial appeal to make it um stand up out there as well you know because one person could say you know it's easy to write an iowa george song you know and no disrespect to iowa or anything like that but i've heard people say that you know it's easy to do what iowa george does maybe but there's a whole package that goes into that and not anybody could do that you know you might just think it's it's 155 mentions of the word hand or rag or water but there's a whole package that goes into that and not everybody could do what he does you know and sometimes it's that simple you know i think different things go into the the package <laughs> yeah so yeah so um so that's those are some things that you have to look at when you're actually judge any talent because you have to start with the actual talent now i would say talent isn't everything but that's that's honestly where it starts you know because that is what is being sold right the ability to do this thing so good that you think you should make money from it right so quality relevance the appeal whether it's catchy whether it's believable and whether it's clever Right. Um, and then we would move on to catalog. Now, I've heard a lot of great songwriters say that you never stop writing because you never know which song is going to be that song that basically takes you from this level to that level, this level to that level. Which song is it? Now, you might feel as though you have that song. But the truth is you never know until you know. You never know until you get the song into the right hands. You don't even know who the right hands might be. You know, it's so unpredictable, but there's a lot of faith that goes into this and, and there's a lot of know-how. Um, so the reason I say catalog is because I believe the catalog, building a catalog should be one of if not your main focus as a as a songwriter as a as a musician right you should have a body of work you should have variety right you should um a catalog is a collection of songs for you right you need to write every day if possible at least as often as you can and this would not only help you become a better writer but also give you more variety in your material, which increases your odds of, the odds that you will have the right song for a particular project or, or a particular client. 
and I could give you just a little story um, about me. I remember walking into um, a Rock Nation um, session, and I think right now they're still working on Rihanna's project, but I was walking into a session. I had no idea that I was walking into a session to play them records for Rihanna's consideration. And I remember um, just going through records, right? Just just going through songs, thinking I know what they're looking for, but I had no clue that it was a session to pick songs for Rihanna. And I remember just going through songs and just going through songs until until one of the A&R was turned to me and he was like, play me your best song, your most emotional song. And when he said that, it occurred to me that I didn't play any of those type of records for him, right? Now, the beauty in having a catalog is that a catalog would allow you the opportunity to express more and to do more and not just talk about one thing, right? Because I, 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 I had a meeting with the, the Spotlight artist with Music TT, um, I think it was on Friday, and I asked every every artist, um, what do they like to create? You know, what do they typically like writing? You know, and I got answers. And the reason for that was to see what they're most comfortable with and just to get an idea of what their body of work would be, right? And had I not written some emotional records, I may not have had any songs that they were really looking for. You know, I still don't know if the song was taken, you know, because this 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 Rihanna project has taken um, some time to put together, but it's important to build a catalog. And I'll tell you why as well. Um, sometimes, let's say you're shopping stuff for, for, for television, um, for a, a TV show, and it might be, it might be a very dark, um, TV show. Let's let's say for dark, dark on on Netflix. I don't know if anybody knows that, or if anybody um, looks at Lucifer or anything like that. And you might pay attention. You may not pay attention to the the songs in the in the show, but those of us involved in in um, the music industry would pay a little closer attention than the average person. And I could tell you from experience, they handpicked those songs. Not just because um, it's a good song, but because the song adds to the mood of the, the scene or it helps tell the story. And we are aware that music can help tell the story. You know, it complements reality, you know. Um, and, and I think we all are aware of the fact that music can play on your emotions and, and tug on your heartstrings and all these things. So it's, it's very, very important to have the right song for the right moment and for the right mood, right? Um, and building a, a catalog, I'm seeing I have here that uh, it increases the variety and the odds that you'll have the right song for a particular project, which I just went on and explained. And a great catalog has an array of tempos, emotions, and style. And, and that's what I just explained as well. So not all the songs in your catalog should be 135 or, or in BPM I, I'm referring to or, or 95 or 105. You know, you want to have an array. You want to have variety. You want to have um, just give the people the opportunity to make a choice right because let's think if if you are trying to get a song in a, a scene where it's a romance scene you're not gonna have a song that is uh uh 135 bpm you know and just you know what i'm saying it's it's not it it, it doesn't suit it isn't appropriate right so building a catalog should be of extreme importance right it gives you options it gives your client options okay so 
moving on. Everybody's with me, right? Everybody understands everything so far. Feel free to ask questions if you must. Um, so we're moving on. We're going to move on to pitching. How many of us know what pitching is? When I say pitching, do you understand what I'm referring to? Are you there? Yeah? Okay, good. So getting your music heard is one of the hardest steps, and I'll be honest with you, it is difficult. Um, but it is, it is very possible with patience and persistence. Now, I'm saying persistence. I ain't mean to nag people. Eh? <laughs> Thank you, Kareem. Um, yeah, so it's possible with, with patience and persistence. And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, knowing the right people or knowing who is who helps because you can get it into the right hand who will be able to maybe get it into the next hand that might be able to make a decision but either way you have to get your your you have to get your stuff out there you have to find ways to get it into the hands of the necessary people right so the question now is who do you pitch to you know i have i have new songwriters and producers coming to me almost every day and they have amazing work but they come to me because maybe I'm the only person that they know that is connected in the industry in some way. Um, and they're not wrong for doing that. that. That is part of it, you know. You find those that you think um, might be willing to give you an air and might be willing to help you, you know. Unfortunately, um, not everybody is as nice. <laughs> Not everybody's as welcoming or, or reasonable and would like to help. You know, um, you're going to come across many personalities and things that might turn you off. You know, and the truth is, I can be real with you guys that sometimes, or, or all the time, these these people in the industry are being bombarded with with songs and, and offers almost every single day, you know, especially music supervisors. Every single day, someone is trying to get a record into their hands. So the thing, the question now is, how do you stand out and how do you get them to give you an air, right? But let's go back a little bit to who do you pitch to, right? You pitch to artists, managers, producers, A&Rs, publishing companies, music supervisors, and, and that's just a few that I put there. But you pitch to almost anybody you think or any opportunity that you think could lead to something. Sometimes you shoot and you miss, and, and that's just the reality. I think the key thing that I would like you to take from that is you don't, as much as you may encounter um, situations where it doesn't seem promising, you don't stop doing it. You know, if your desire is to really do this, there's going to be moments where your stuff might be rejected. Somebody might even respond. You know what I'm saying? You might even be disrespected, but it, it, it works. You know, you, you're not going to fail all the time, right? You're not going to fail all the time. Kareem asks, what is an a and R? Um, I could give you the, the proper definition. Um, an a and R, or I can give you just my understanding of what an a &R is. And Pitya and a and are like some sort of a, a talent scout, right? They, they work mostly with record labels. Um, does production quality count in a pitch? Yes, of course. Of course. Um, it does. It does. It's, it's extremely important. Um, one of the key things that I, I do when I pitch, and I'll be real with you, is... I make sure that 
my demos are as close to the final as possible you know yes artisan repertoire personnel that is exactly the the definition of an a r so and the a r's job is to basically in a sense find find the music find the talent um and and pitch it in such a way to the label heads to make sure that um this is something that they would like to invest in or not you know the a and r's find the artists they find the songs for the artists they find the producers that they think the artist should work with you know it's a and r's are gifted with the ability of vision and sight you know um if not for a and r's we wouldn't know half of the entertainers that we know you know especially the the um international acts you know a lot of them were discovered by a and r's um so let me let me just go back to does production quality count yeah um i could tell you from experience that one of the things that has gotten me into a lot of rooms and has gotten me callbacks and 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 further sessions was the fact that um i took on the responsibility of leaving as little room for the listeners to imagine too much you know i make my demos in such a way where all you have to do now is try and envision yourself singing it there's background vocals there i do ad libs i pay very close attention to who i'm pitching for so let's say patrice roberts asks me for a song i will do this demo almost embodying patrice roberts you get what i'm saying um what about security of lyrics in pitching songs now you're going to always have that concern whether somebody will steal your stuff um that is always going to be there there's a level of of risk that is going to have to come into play and and that's it's necessary you know um especially if you want to do this thing plagiarism is real you know there's possibilities that when you actually make it somebody try and copy your style and and basically just swagger jack you and and that's a real possibility um you can do things however to ensure that you protect your lyrics you know you you send it registered mail to yourself and at least you know there's some sort of a time stamp on it so now if you are in a legal situation you can now say that now nah, this i wrote this song this is the lyrics time stamped everything registered mail back to myself and that now protects you and the beauty now is would metadata protect your ip in a way um yeah i i would say so yes um because all these things are time stamped right um so right so one of the beauties about uh the digital age is you know we record a lot of stuff on our phone on our phones now and these voice notes are time stamped so that's in a way you you are protecting yourself so don't lose any of your things make sure you back up every voice note um if you are a writer and you like to write on paper write it out send it registered mail back to yourself do not open it that's protecting yourself right because you cannot register a song until it's released you know um so so those are ways that you can protect yourself let me see some of these questions um well you can send it out and hope that nobody will steal it or you can keep it close and make sure nobody will hear it exactly you know so so there's some level of risk thanks for that Aaron um yeah so those are some things that you have to keep in mind when when you are pitching you have to be aware of your quality um because i can tell you sometimes people will send me songs and i can't even bear to listen through it and i've been in situations like that where i was working with um 
Nickelodeon on a project for one of their, their artists that they were developing. And I, um, I sent a demo. Really good song. A good song. Really, really dope record. And they didn't even listen through the demo because the demo's quality was horrible. You know, so they want to... The truth is they want to be able to hear some... some 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 level of completion or at least as close to completion as possible right because they need to see the vision and it would be in your best interest to help them see the vision as clear as possible making sense let me know if that makes sense you know try and leave as little room for them to have to imagine too much because the truth is and i could tell you this first time as well not everybody has vision for certain things they don't you know you could talk over and over and hope that they have a creative eye or a creative ear to see past um see past their fears and their expectations to really catch a vision and you're not going to always um meet people like that you know some people do some people don't you know um an example would be sometimes people will send me a song and it's completely a cappella. But because I have an air for music and I have an appreciation for melodies, I would listen to a cappella and I could tell you that, yeah, with the right song, this could be amazing. But if I sing idea for an artist or just anybody, they may not be able to grasp the, the vision, the complete vision for the record that I'm singing or playing for them with old music. They need the music, right? Um, one saying when you're pitching a record is that when you're pitching, you, you are likened onto a sniper with a rifle, right? And you'll see my little, my little sniper scoop there. But I'm not like a, a shooter with a shotgun right and you'll you'll catch what i'm trying to say right um you try to be as precise as possible like a sniper and not like a shotgun because a shotgun is scattered shells you could hit almost anything on anybody right but you pitching a record is a precision sport you know um so you can understand where your vision is and where the song is good musical yes exactly Rene. um yeah, but I suck at music production. Um, now nah, that's okay, Nia. Uh, you, if if music production is not your your strong suit, then work on what you're good at. You know, work on what you're good at. Maybe one of the things that you have to do, and I should have mentioned this when talking about building a catalog. I think collaboration is a extremely important fact in in building your catalog as a writer, as a producer, as an artist. Um, the truth is you cannot do everything yourself. And there are some beautiful things that come out of collaboration. Um, I could give you one international example. Um, Ed Sheeran's album, um, I think is Galway Girl, or one of, one of those records off of the, I can't remember the name of the album, but there's a record called Galway Girl or something like that. And, that song was written by 12 writers, you know? And I've been in rooms with at least eight writers, you know, and everybody bouncing ideas off each other and basically trying to come up with the most dope record that you could possibly hear, you know? And sometimes you might just get two lines in, you know, you might get melodies, but the fact is you're all how, you all have a, a part to play in something that is so amazing and so weird that, you know, sometimes you get to learn so much from the perspective of other writers on, on how they would attack a topic, you know? Um, so, so a catalog and, and pitching sometimes is you have to collaborate. You kind of do, you know, um, if you're a songwriter and you know nothing about music production, find a producer that would be willing to team up with you and where you can now bring your ideas and your creations to life. You feel me? So let's move on. 
Um, right, so we, we covered this. Quality demos as close to final product as possible. Ensure your song is competitive. That, hmm, if I tell you, because sometimes, like I, like I said earlier on, sometimes you can be so biased to your own, your own thing that it blinds you. And you have to sometimes understand that you, your way is not the only way. And just as how you think you are pitching an amazing song, bet your bottom dollar somebody could pitch a song that is way better than yours. You know, or it may not even be that it needs to be compared as to whether it's better or not, but maybe it's more suitable for the artist. You feel me? And, and that's a reality. You know, something might just suit a, a, a situation better than yours. I was on a on a, um, a, a, a licensing opportunity doing an album for some Netflix projects, and it was a new wave R and B project. And um, I wrote this beautiful record on one of the tracks that was sent in the folder beats but somebody else wrote a song that the music supervisor felt that it just fit the scene better so mine got shelved but the beauty is no songs are wasted you know you could always do over the music and use it for something else and it may be able to fit something else you know way better than it would have fit yours right um, yes, Rene, let me see what you're asking here. What are your thoughts on writing Afro music? Uh, I write a lot of Afro music, so my thoughts on it is I think Afro music is amazing and the world is looking at Afro beats as well. So I think um, there's definitely a lot of room for that. Um, we, we in the career are very close to Afro music because I think... Um, I mean, we come from all of that, you know. Uh, soca music is a collaboration of African and Indian, you know. So we have an appreciation for percussions and rhythm and, and drums and, and all these things, you know. Um, so I definitely believe that, you know, wherever wherever you feel most creative and where you would what, what you would want to express, feel free to do that, you know. Um, there's no there's no law that says. Being from Trinidad means you only have to do music that is native to here. You know, um, another thing when you're pitching is that you try, depending on how you're pitching, because uh, you could email, once you have um, the right contacts to do it, I think um, you should be able to send music that is appropriate, one, don't oversend, because I'm going to give you some do's and don'ts right now, actually. Um, and I will start off by saying this. Never send unsolicited music. Make sure that it's okay to send, right? You definitely have to make sure that it's okay to send. Renny, what you're saying, uh, how do you go about doing it? Because I suck at it. I mean, you have to be social to some point. You have to be able to not be afraid to introduce yourself to people. So... So if it is you are a writer or a vocalist and you want to team up with producers, then you need to go search them out. You need to find out who is who and and more or less create a relationship, you know? Am I breaking up? I don't know. Uh, you guys would have to tell me. Noel is, is saying that I'm breaking up. I'm breaking up badly. Okay, let me see. All right, let me um let me take off the airpods. I'm hearing you clearly, I'm hearing you fine. Okay. Rennie is saying that I was breaking up badly. Okay. Okay, good. No problem. Right. So never send unsolicited music. You find out who who will if it's okay to send, even if it means reaching out to people on Instagram, nothing is wrong with that. Just don't spam and don't, don't nag because those things turn people off. You know, if, if, 
if nobody responds, don't be sitting there sending a message every week until they respond. Because when they finally open the message, they're going to see you talking to yourself for three weeks straight. You know what I mean? And they're going to say, yo, this person either desperate or you're trying too hard and you need to back off a little bit. I get it all the time. And the truth is, I can't open all the messages that come to me. People be, my, my DMs be lit sometimes, you know, and I would have thought that be coming from that same perspective of being a writer, reaching out to people, I could, I could understand now why, you know, some people don't respond because the truth is you have hundreds of people sending you stuff. So much producers reach out to me sometimes and send me records that I could tell you, no, don't go and tell them, but there's no way that I am going to be able to listen to all them beats. My emails be full of beats and direct um, we transfer links. And I mean, I will download the we transfer links because I don't want them to expire, but Dropbox links and and it's hundreds and thousands of beats. I can I can listen everything. You know, I have my process to create. And and the truth is everybody thinks their their issues are urgent. You know, and sometimes you really just wanna you can't. You there's just no way for you to do it. Right? Um when you when you're pitching stuff and and especially if you're pitching stuff to artists and, and publishers and, and music supervisors, it's best that you send links rather than MP3 files. Nobody, because it takes a lot of work away from them and the hassle of having to download stuff. Like really and truly nobody wants to do that. So a lot of them would much rather click a link and have the record play. And if it is they're interested in the song, they would just hit you up and be like, yo, send me the MP3. And, and that's a way to do it, you know. That's what most of them prefer anyway, right? If they ask you for it, then you send the MP3. Other than that, send a link, right? And and if you don't want them sharing your music all over the place, then just make it private, share it only with them, right? Yes, Roy, no response is also a response. Sometimes it's just not dope and, you know, you need to go back to the drawing board or maybe it's just not, you know, um, when 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 those opportunities come for you to make a pitch you have to make sure it fits the artist as close to as possible right make sure your song is competitive if your song sounds like an amateur wrote it when you pitch the songs you are competing against big boys you have to you have to get that in your head right you're competing against professionals so your song should hold up everything that it's being pitched against right and if it's not feeling like it's amazing, do not pitch it. If it is not an amazing idea, don't pitch it, right? If it is not something that you think you are completely proud of, don't pitch it. Because then you have to ask yourself, what do I want out of this? You know, what do I want, you know, my legacy to be, right? Uh, Keep your presentations business-like, especially if you're doing it in person, you know, um, keep it business-like, start small. Um, and some, some realities are, are also going to be this. If, you, if you've never had a, a major artist release or record any of your music, the chances of getting one is, is pretty, pretty slim. So it is good to start small and build. Everybody wants a record on 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 drake or rihanna or let's bring it home everybody wants to send a record to kess and and get kess to to, to record it now the truth is if kess has never worked with you you don't have any kind of catalog that he can you know listen to chances are he may not do it now he's a good dude so he might give you an a right but if if your if your work is amateur there's no way you're gonna get it cut no a good record is a good record so it's not completely impossible but my point is this 
sometimes it works out better for you to start small and build find a find a upcoming artist to work with you know what i'm saying find a find a uh somebody who is hungry as you are like-minded as you are and build and grow with that person you know i am i am fortunate enough now where i manage an artist and and i can tell you it's it's not the easiest thing but it's a beautiful thing to be able to to create something and be a part of molding and shaping something for a greater purpose you know um it's like you're there from the ground building a talent that you know once it does everything right it will be a force to reckon with you know what i'm saying um and i think that that is that is beautiful so take a little page out of something like that and i know that you want the big names and the accolade the greatest and work with the best but have patience young grasshoppers it will come my first record in the soca industry was not with kes you know i've been writing for years making money from it um and i think kes was just getting my first record with kes and doing soca the way that i'm doing it now was just part of the journey you know it just that's just how things lined up and and i think sometimes you have to be able to appreciate your journey uh i'm gonna move on now uh let me see so we're gonna talk about ownership right now ownership is extremely important um this is where we talk about your publishing your writer share masters your PROs and all these things. And sometimes you, it starts with you understanding what makes up your song and, and what are your rights as a creative, right? So I'll start by saying this, understanding how your ownership is broken down and collected by societies around the world is vital to your music profession. Right, every music professional should understand these things. Now, it, it'll take you a while to really wrap your mind around some things, but to get the gist of it, a song, a song is broken up like this. And and here's the diagram that I, I put together for you guys. Um, an original song, you have the song on top. You have the master recording, you have the composition, right? Now, you get publishing off of the composition, which is the music and the lyrics and melody, right? Um, because the truth is a producer is also known as a writer because they had to write the music. Now, a lot of modern day producers aren't musicians like that. So they can tell you and they can sit on and play it on keyboards and maybe not even all the, the theory, the notes, but still they are writing the music, they are creating the music. So therefore they are considered writers as well, right? So when you think about publishing, you think also about writer share. This is your royalties. Many of us, <laughs> yes, explain. Many of us, um, would have already registered with PROs. Um, is there anybody here that's not registered with a PRO? A PRO meaning a, a performance. Um, one of those like cuts, cuts BMI, those are PROs, right? Um, it's extremely important that you should be, right? And sometimes the only way for you to really be a part of those PROs is to have a song out. You know, um, you can't register with cut. <laughs> music TT is, I don't think Music TT is a PRO. Um, I, I don't know what, what, what the, if Music TT has, has um, 
plans of being a PR with Mariela, and they would have to clarify that with me. But um, I think Trinidad has three PROs, Cut, um, Awesome, and yes, a performance rights organization, yes. Yes, Music TT is not a PRO, so Mariela is answering Kareem. Right. Um, yeah, so we have three, I believe, in Trinidad, um, which is CUT, TTCO, whatever the name of that, that next agency is. I, I don't know the name of it. Um, and awesome. So we have three. And I think every Caribbean has one. The U.S. has a few, but the giant ones are like BMI, CSAC, um, ASCAP, right? Canada has one, um, there's PRS in the UK, a lot of them, right? Australia has their own. And these, these companies are how a lot of creatives would collect their royalties, right? Now, I want to tie back in something here for you guys, just to give you a little insight into your publishing and your royalties and stuff like that. Um, you see, when you build a catalog, and this is why a catalog is so important, because of that catalog, that catalog, every song, you should register every song once it's out, right? The more songs you have out and the more songs you have registered, you stand a better chance of being able to collect royalties from all these songs. And some songs might collect more royalties than others, but it's going to add up. It's going to add up and it's going to look so beautiful when you collect those checks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So register your stuff, you know, um, continue to build your catalog, right? And every single one of you guys should be a member of a PR. Um, my advice to you would be dual membership. I have dual membership. I am with Cut. Cut represents me in Trinidad and the Caribbean region and BMI represents me throughout the world, everywhere else, you know, and it makes sense for me, you know, uh, um, so you should do that, right? So this is how a song is broken up. On the master side of the song, do you guys know what a master is? So a master is basically the song recording, that final product. That is the master, right? Um, if you pay for the production and, and all these things, in most scenarios, you own the master. You know, um, you could co-own the master with, with a producer, you know, but that's really up to be negotiated, right? Um, on the master, you collect digital performance royalties and master recording revenues. So I'll tell you how it works if you pitch a song to a movie, right? When you pitch to a movie, or let's say you get a licensing opportunity, um, there's the publishing and there's the master, right? You are going to be paid. They have to pay on both sides of the songs. So let's say you get a song synced in a movie for 50,000 US dollars. The client, the movie, is going to have to pay 50000 on the publishing side, which is your, your, your regular royalties and stuff like that. And they're going to have to pay 50000 on the master, right? Because that's just how it's broken up, right? Um, so you get to make double the money. That's at least if you own everything. Of course, if you don't own everything, then everything should be split you know um so let's talk a little bit of the publisher share um so the publisher the publisher is the publishing sorry is the other half of the the the, the copyrights right so there's writer share and there's publishing right and make up the composer royalties right royalties uh, let me just read a little insert from what I have here. 
there's a split in, in two equal halves, write a share, which is 50%, and publish a share, which is also 50%. And these, these are two separate revenue types for performing rights organizations, which is like the PROs or collective management organizations, right? Um, write a share makes up half of that performance royalties, and the other half will go to the publishing. And these are generated by public performances and of the composition, whether it be digital, on-demand, streaming, live concert, radio, all these things, right? So making sure all your stuff is registered properly, that is also making sure that you get an income from this, right? It doesn't stop there. Don't, don't lose hope, right? It doesn't just stop right there. Um, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can make actual money from this, right? Um, the difference, what is the difference between a master recording and music publishing? Every song has two parts to it, the recorded side and the composition side. Master recordings refer to the recording of the musical performance that can be played back or reproduced. And you can earn money from the master recording by selling your recordings directly, like CDs and um, putting it up on, on all these platforms to stream and stuff like that, right? Or distribute it. And, you know, that is basically how you make money off of the master, right? Um, and the um, underlying composition is what I call the publishing, right? Uh, that... That is how a lot of songwriters are going to make their income from it. Of course, one of the main things that any songwriter should do, and I think I heard Mariella comment on it um, last week in, a, in one of our sessions, was make sure that you have your writing split sheets always on hand. Like these things are extremely important for you because it says, which part of the piece of the pie you own, right? And you need to make sure that you have that, right? And then there's fees. Now, I could tell you this. Um, you get what you negotiate in this industry, right? If your product is good and depending on the market and the situation, you can negotiate a fee in exchange for your time, for your talent, and for a piece of your publishing because the truth is you don't really when you sell a song you don't really we're not in the business of selling songs really nobody buys out your song from you you know i've i've been in situations and circumstances where i've sold my rights to a record but i can tell you that that is not cheap um i've sold my rights for hundreds of thousands of dollars um, and it's only because you could now decide, you know, you could weigh the balance and see if you're willing to take that risk or not. You know, it was for corporate entities. And I know I felt like if, if it was the U.S. market, I, I wouldn't sell my, my, my publishing. But it was Trinidad, you know. So um, there's a ceiling, sadly as to where things reach sometimes here, you know, and it was years ago, but you don't typically sell your publishing and your rights to a song. You, if you are good enough, your work is valued enough, you can negotiate a fee for doing that work. So do the songwriters make from the composition aspect solely or composition is split? as well between songwriter and producer. It's split between the songwriter and producer. Um, a song is basically out of 100, 50% of that is the, the writer's half, and the next half is usually for the producer, right? Um, so other organizations would do the splits out of 200. So like BMI, um, unlike CUT, does it out of 200. And cut, I think, does it out of 100, right? Um, but you split it with, with the producer, right? The master, on the other hand, is something that is left to negotiate. Typically, how it works is 
whoever pays for the production owns the master. If the producer wasn't paid, he would typically own the master unless negotiated, you know, under other terms, which is also possible. But with respect to fees, you can, you can charge a fee. Now that is solely up to you. That is where you are now in the position to value your work. I'm breaking up again. I, I don't understand why I'm breaking up. Am I just breaking up for you or am I breaking up for anybody else? You guys have to let me know. All right? I don't know if I, like I'm not hearing me. Right, but um, clear to me. Okay, good. Clear on my end. Thanks, Mariella. Right, so, so yeah, so so that's a little bit on 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 the um on ownership, right? Do you guys need me to clear up anything else in terms of ownership for you guys? What else do you guys need to know? You could ask me some questions before I move on to paperwork and stuff like that. No, you're not breaking up. We're good, still clear. Okay, cool. Right. Um, so we're gonna move on to paperwork now. Uh, a lot of times, the very subject of business fees and royalties and copyright splits and publishing and a lot of times when those things it could kind of suck the energy right out of the room. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a buzzkill sometimes, um, especially when you're creating. You know, it kind of business sometimes just dampens the mood of that creative vibe in the room. You know, but at the end of the day, this is for your own benefit, and you have to. It has to come up. It has to come up, and in the past. And I've been guilty of this because I'll be real with you guys. I, I am still growing, you know, I'm still putting a lot of my business in place. So I am not in any means sitting here as though I am the Lord of songwriting, you know, and I'm the best there is, right? I have made some very stupid mistakes in the past with respect to handling my business properly, you know, and I've felt the, 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 the sting of that, right? But you live and you learn and you get better every time. Um, Stephen Edwards, I'm not, what, what are you asking me? I'm not sure um, the function of the producer. Uh, I mean, the producer makes the music. The function of the producer is to sometimes, in a sense, to create the final product. To, the producer has to have a vision as to what is quality, what is good. Sometimes the producer's eye and air helps mold the product into, you know, the final thing. You know, like Quincy Jones, one of the greatest producers of all times, um, wasn't really sitting in the room playing instruments and producing behind, you know, the mixing board and all these things. He wasn't doing all of that. But he had the air and the eye and the vision to kind of just, you know, bring everything into scope. You know what I'm saying? He had that creative sight, that foresight to see and bring everything together. You know, there's different types of producers. All producers won't be functioning like that. Um, growing up, what we are accustomed to is producers who sit there and they make the beat and they know how to treat the vocals and, and basically basically um, get the final product sound in the way it's supposed to sound, right? Um, so I don't know if that, that helps you, Stephen, is that okay? Does that give you some clarity in the function of a producer? Because I'm going to move back on to paperwork, right? I don't know how much time we have, so I kind of want to make sure I go through everything that I meant to talk about and then we could ask some questions. Is my slide available for download? I mean, I don't mind sharing it with you guys. A lot of what I'm talking about is in my side notes. 
the slide is really just like bullet points. So I don't mind if you want it. Uh, I, I guess, you know, you guys can have it if you want. I am not sure if I can download it. I think maybe Music TT might have to help with that and make it available for you guys if you want it. But I don't mind. It's, it's all good. Right. Okay. So I think, I think Mariela is trying to help you out there, Karim. Basically, the slide ain't going anywhere. <laughs> it, it'll be up there on the internet forever. Right? So, right. So, a lot of times, business just dampens the mood, you know, but you have to do it because you're going to burn to learn eventually, you know, and it's, it's very, very difficult when you get screwed over on, on, um, on the business side. So you have a responsibility. So the person, sorry, Stephen, um, well, not in all cases, if the producer knows how to master, then he, he could do it, you know, um, but we have engineers who there's people who are, who are gifted and skilled in being a mixing engineer and a mastering engineer, and they deal with those things, you know, they provide those services. It's not. It's not ideal for the producer to do everything themselves because sometimes it's about your air and your air needs to rest, you know, it, cause it could, it comes like being biased to your own work. Sometimes fresh airs needs to be able to finish it, you know, in terms of the frequencies and, and all these things. All right. Um, right. So back to, 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 to the paperwork. So it's important for you, it's to your detriment, you know, um, it's to your benefit that you need to be able to, you know, get your business done. So we come back to a simple thing called the split sheet, right? That's the first step in terms of paperwork, especially when you're actually in the creating process, right? Four writers in the room writing a record, do the split sheet, right? If the producer, well, I mean, the split sheet has to involve the producer too. But you, if you want to deal with just the right inside, who wrote it? If it's out of 100, 25 each. Or depend, it depends really on the level of work. You can't you can bring two ideas to the table and expect equal shares with everybody else who write the song. You know, it depends on your work. So that needs to be negotiated in the session, right? Make sure everybody's in agreement. Make sure everybody's happy. But at the same time, make sure you're fair. You're fair to yourself first and to everybody else in the room, right? I, I am not going to sit in a session where I basically quarterback the whole session. The whole session is on my back. I write it. I come up with everything. You come up with two ideas and we're going to split the record 50-50. Like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work like that, right? If you did no writing, you're not going to get half of it. You know, I, I've been in sessions where... I wrote some some records and the other writer would have probably suggested like this legit happened to me guys just quick little story i wrote a, a song for a popular soca artist and i had a a co-writer with me vibes in the song with me didn't really get to the co-writer didn't really get to really get involved in the song but there was one point where i was trying to come up with a word and he suggested a different word oh gosh i say a he so i'm sorry but um you still will know who it is <laughs> but the, the co-writer suggested a word and i took that suggestion right and um i remember now when the song got placed recorded and ready to come out i got the call like so what are money looking like <laughs> where's my cut and i was like bro you legit <laughs> you part, you give a word like I wrote everything else, you know. Um, but I mean, fear is fear. I am not going to disregard anybody's involvement, but depending on your involvement, you have to be realistic as to what you really deserve, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, people are gonna always try first, and then, you know, if you put them in the place, then <laughs> you know, you you could sort it out after. So um, I would have probably given them 
maybe just a couple points on the on the publishing, but nothing crazy, you know. Um, but instances like that, so you need to say from the jump what the case is. And in that instance, I didn't do a split sheet up front, you know. But let's say you're in high school or you're in, you're in university or whatever, and you create a song in your in your dorm room with your with your um, your friends. And 10 years down the road, somehow this song gets in the hand of the, the music supervisors for Fast and Furious. And they pick it, and now there's 500,000 US on the table to use this song. Now, that's a lot of money, but let's just say. Now, your, 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 your friends in your dorm room may have suggested a line or two, or maybe written a whole verse or something. But now, 10 years down the road, there's all this money in place, and now there's arguments and questions of whether who wrote this and who wrote that, and now you're nitpicking at the song. And I, I absolutely hate that. You know? No, you, I suggested this, and you suggested I, I hate it. It's annoying. So save yourself all that drama and do a split sheet, a short document that details which writer owns what percentage of the song, right? Yeah, yeah, Aaron, it's, it's a real thing. So save yourself all that because when business starts to talk, attitudes change. You know, when people realize that money's involved, attitudes change. And, and it's a sad reality. The next thing, as a songwriter, you're going to want to have a writer's agreement. Now, I have a writer's agreement, right? Um, a writer's agreement documents the terms of the arrangement between you, the songwriter, and the artist or client. If, however, you want to do a song and sell it to a corporate, a corporate entity, and this corporate entity is willing to pay you and buy out your publishing, you would need something that's called a transfer of rights agreement, right? Similar to a writer's agreement, but now you, know, you, are, not, no, you are not going to retain any of your publishing and ownership rights you are going to be paid for it in full that is not cheap so if anybody in this chat wants to do something like that i am telling you know your worth know your worth right what are you willing to accept to walk away from a song right on that topic what is the highest range you have ever heard a local writer get paid for from sync or film. Um, I don't know about much local writers who are doing sync and film. Um, I could tell you the highest I've ever gotten paid for, um, for film so far would have been um, I think maybe around 5,000 US so far, you know, but that's just on one sink, you know. The, the key, the beauty with it is you're doing this all the time and you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, you know. But I have been parts of, I've been part of pitches where the, the money in at play was hundreds of thousands of US. I just didn't get through with the pitch. But me personally, yeah, about 5,000, you know, sometimes it's, it's less than that. Um, and sometimes it's, it takes a while for people to come through and for you to get your money too, you know. But that's why you can't do this and stop today and stop tomorrow. And it's a continuous thing, you know. You have to keep doing it because all these things, all these lump sums, they come in and you can make a beautiful life off of it, you know. I know songwriters who've gotten through with pitches, not in Trinidad, but part of my network outside, um, where they've gotten 20,000, where they've gotten 600,000, where they've gotten 750,000 US. You know, like people live in good lives off of this. You know, and like I said, I've, I've, I've been asked to make pitches for, for records where it was 75. Um, um, 350,000 US and, and stuff like that. So there's money to be made in these things, you know. 
but you have to have the mindset. It starts here to really grind and do the work and do proper business, but it is possible, right? So that was paperwork, right? Um, let's go on. What is next? This is an example of what a split sheet looks like. So if you want to take a, a, a shot of that, now you could make your own split sheet or you can um, find them online, right? And edit them to suit. It's very, very easy. So this is just one. So it would have the name of the song, the date. The date is very important because you need to time stamp your things, people, right? Super case if necessary. Every song, their affiliation, which is their PRO, their publisher, if you have one, um, you don't necessarily need a publisher. You are, until you sign with a, a big company as a publisher, you are, every writer is automatically their own publisher, right? You are automatically your own publisher, but not everybody knows how to go about collecting their publishing for themselves, right? Your, your PRO would collect like your basic royalties and stuff like that. Um, your writer share more or less. And maybe your royalties on your mechanicals and stuff like that. And then, well, moving on, the, the last bracket would be your share. So the person that suggests a line or two, the rest of the group might say, well, bro, we want to share this thing um, evenly. You know, you really only just came up with two lines. So it's not fair. So everybody might agree that Jack, who only come up with two lines, might just get 10%. And then everybody else splits it. Or they might decide, you know, we're going to split it evenly across the board, you know. So that's an idea of a split sheet, and that's how it works. So let's talk about opportunities and where you can make that cream. So opportunities as a songwriter. Now, I can tell you there's a big world out there, you know, and you can make money all how in this in this in this industry, right? From artist placements to licensing and sync to jingles to monetizing your music. Yeah, it's 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 great, it's beautiful, but you have to be able to do the work and and find your opportunities, right? It is not for the weak of heart people right it is not for the easily annoyed trust me um artist placement is just one aspect of it you know if i was if i banked my entire career on getting artists to sing my songs i don't think i would be enjoying it as much as i do you know um it's a good part to it you know and how you could make money from that is one out of your royalties as well as charging a fee. Now I charge a fee and I'm gonna tell you how much the fee is, but I charge a fee and I'm paid that fee because they value what I do. And I don't play with my, my publishing. So I make sure every song is registered, you know? So while some people will be complaining, boy, we ain't get nothing good from, you know, the copyrights this year. I I could have smiled because, you know, my catalog big. I have so many songs out there that plays and, and did well. So that's still collecting royalties, you know, internationally and locally. So I'm, I'm okay on that side, you know, and, and it's really just growing because I'm always working. One of my mottos is to outwork everybody, you know, continue to put that work in. Um, Another way, like we discussed, was sync, sync and licensing. So sync is when you, you know, um, they basically take your music and sync it with video, right? Basically, that's in a nutshell, that's what it is. You sync your audio with video. So you could get a sync placement in a commercial. You could get a sync placement in a movie. You could get a sync placement just in the soundtrack. For a movie, you could get a sync placement in the trailer, 
trailers doing music music for trailers is a big industry you know i know a few music supervisors that all they do is the trailers right the trailers those little promos that you see before the feature film start in movie town they do the music for that you know and that is big business you know um and there's a whole world out there for that you know there's so many companies like you do not know the power and the reach that music has on the international stage you know when they um the nfl might want a song for a commercial you know they will want your song for video games all these things sync opportunities and it's a very lucrative world and it's a world that i am very grateful to be a part of now you know i'm part of i am i work with a lot of sync companies i work with a lot of music supervisors now i work with a lot of companies that are building music libraries for sync you know and um it gives you the opportunity as a creative to be even more creative you know i write every genre but i do a lot of soca music here as well you know um and sometimes it's just good to get out of your normal routine you know it it it's it's challenging because sometimes it calls you to now jump be from genre to genre you know you're jumping you know some some weeks are not in a soca mood some weeks are not in an afrobeat mood i in pop i in r&b and i've been like that for the duration of the lockdown you know um where do you find sync and licensing opportunities um i could tell you in my in trinidad <laughs> in my in trinidad is is very very few and in between in trinidad you know you might you might get a few you know but is in my opinion is is very good to set your sights outside now what you would need to start to do is research you know linkedin is a very good place to start so get yourselves professional linkedin accounts where it would afford you certain resources where you could now reach out to people better and you will have access to more information and you can find almost everybody i'll give you a little secret what i do now because i work in 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 sync and licensing now um because I work in sync and licensing now. And for some time, you know, I've been dabbling in it for a couple of years now. Um, but because I do this now, every time a TV show ends or a film ends, I don't just skip through the credits anymore. I don't. Now I look at who is the music supervisor. Now, for those that don't know what the music supervisor is, the music supervisor is the person that selects the songs for the different scenes, right? This is the person that says, yeah, I need a moody, dark pop record for this scene where Lucifer feels heartbroken, you know, or I need something sung in deadly and, and emotional for this scene when they realize they kill Rob Stark, you know, but I mean, Game of Thrones didn't have music like that. That was more orchestral kind of stuff. But if you get what I'm saying, um, but yes, Theodore, I've actually taken photos of the credits because I need to know who the music supervisor is. And then I go on LinkedIn, see if I find them or just Google them. Some things would come up and you might even find them on, on, on Instagram. Like I have music supervisors who follow me now and who I follow, you know, music supervisors for Tyler Perry, for Insecure, you know, um, it's there, they're there. The information is there. You know, you just have to know how to put in the work. Siri is talking in my ears. Siri, you need to shut up. No Siri. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, you really just have to, a big part of this thing, a big part of this business is being social, right? Being social and being able to put yourself out there. For the introverts, 
I'm sorry, it's going to be very uncomfortable. But if you're trying to do this, it's either you find somebody who's willing to do it for you, like a manager, or you learn how to get out of your comfort zone and do it for yourself. I've paid attention to details since Bungie was featured in Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, I don't know what, what he's saying he was like for that, but the recognition is great. And me being involved in the music industry, I could tell you, like, I, because we pay closer attention to certain things, unlike other people, like, I have found out great music from just watching shows. Like, a song would hit me so hard in a scene, I'd be like, yo, who the hell, who the hell sing that by? Like, where'd I get a song? You know, and I would go and Google it and just type in the lyrics that I remember and just search and search and search until I find a song. Because the truth is, some amazing records are used in film and TV. I, I, that's how I found out who Ed Sheeran was. I used to, I was watching Vampire Diaries, host, like Vampire Diaries, you know, and, and that's how I found out Ed Sheeran, right? So jingles, jingles basically is like writing hit songs, 30 second hit songs or minute long hit songs. Fortunately, I have written so many jingles in the local market, right? At one point, they used to call me Jingle Jervy <laughs> or Pastor Jingles, Pastor Jingles. Um, I, I, Jingles was how I started making money off of music first, you know, before selling songs. I was selling jingles because I, I determined, I was very determined to make a career off of this, to make a living from it. So I, I did my research and I found out opportunities where I could actually write music and survive. And when I was doing this, this was like in 2011, 2012. I would, I wouldn't necessarily wait for a company to approach me because I was new. I now getting into it. So what I did, and I'm gonna give you a little piece of game here. I created the opportunity for them. You know, now if I understand anything about the business landscape in Trinidad, is that there are certain things that they don't even bother to invest in. But yo, I could sell ice star Eskimo. I ain't playing with you. Um, and I will let you know why you need it, you know? So there's a whole pitch, a whole proposal, letting them know the power of music. And the mere fact, listen, melody is a hell of a thing, guys. And we know these things because um, there's, there's if, look at simple thing as the alphabet. You wouldn't even, there's grown, grown ups, right? There's a lot of grown people who wouldn't even remember the alphabet if they don't sing the melody boom and that's the power of melody so that's the power of music you know um or shazam yeah i paid yeah shazam is i've never used shazam to be honest but i know what it does and i know how it works so yeah shazam is a great way for you to find out you know songs and um commercials have great songs yeah they do right in addition to a songwriter, I am a television and movie producer, director. So I am always looking for local music. I can be contacted. Great, Stephen. That's that's a good that's a good vibes, and I appreciate that. So everybody, make sure to hit up um Stephen Edwards. But Stephen, what are money looking like though? <laughs> I just playing with you, you know. But for real, what are offers looking like? Um. Yeah, so so jingles, um, and jingles is a very lucrative market, guys. You know, um, I could tell you, like, I have done um, commercials for a lot of the big brands. I've I've worked with Digicel, I've worked with Digicel Barbados, I've worked with B Mobile. I was part of the whole 4G, not just 4G. Imagine Next. That was that was my company. I did that. Um, we did the music for a lot of those ads. I was, I don't know if any of you guys know the Bees Homemade Ice Cream jingle. I love Bees Homemade Ice Cream, the great taste that you can't deny. I can't remember how the song goes, but 
Yeah, Bees Homemade Ice Cream is me. A lot of fruit are commercials was me. I've done stuff for Abel Building Blocks. I've done stuff for, I don't know if around Christmas time, you have you guys ever heard the Fanatics Toy Store jingles, the Copal Toy Store jingles? Like, I've, I would have done all those things. Um, <laughs> I did jingles even for Ramsaran's dairy products. Um, a lot too, go energy drink, Buster, a lot of SMG legal stuff, Chubby, you know, um, a lot of jingles, you know, and jingles have really, those things are some of the foundation things for me that basically afforded me to really do this music full time and it encouraged me. I kind of stopped doing it because I feel like a lot of times corporate don't know what the hell they, they're doing or talking about. So I just prefer to be around people who actually know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped doing a lot of those pitches, but if the money right and the proposals come in, I will definitely do it. But I would encourage you guys to take a stab at that. It it could do wonders for you. Um, monetizing your music. Now, monetizing is basically just, you know, um, creating revenue from something, you know, whether it be music, merchandise, whatever, right? So monetizing your music, putting it up on youtube and you know going through the right protocols and channels you know having your stuff streamed right so guys we had to start a wrap up right i have 15 minutes left right so i think i think i reached the end of the slide so now i want to answer some questions right i don't know how much what i shared today would have helped i don't know if it it helped anybody I know some things is things you would already know, but sometimes being able to hear it from a different perspectives kind of gives you a new perspective, right? Who do you approach in the company, the brand manager? Yes, precisely. Brand managers, owners, some businesses are big like Ansa McCall and Bryden. So you definitely need to go to brand managers um, and make your pitch, you know, introduce yourself, you know, but you have, to be, you have to be aware of how you're being perceived and portrayed. So don't look desperate. You know, be confident in what you're doing. Don't brag. Don't name drop. But let your work speak for yourself. Speak for itself. I am I'm a firm believer in show me a fruit and I'll tell you what kind of tree you are. You know, so sometimes we start in with no fruit and we kind of really need... Um, At Shannon, I don't know. I don't know what you're asking me. Sorry. Clarify. Say that the business of songwriting. What? Yeah, to clarify for me, Shannon. Um, media models mansion add my page IG. Okay, good. So everybody just exchanging stuff now, right? So um, so yeah. So sometimes it's just good to get different perspectives from people who actually been you know, making a living off of this. Now, I don't know how many of you guys know my work, um, but I would be the writer behind a lot of Kesley Band music, a lot of Patrice Roberts songs, um, things like Boss Lady, I would have written Reason for Love, Radar, Love It, Close to Me with Shansia, um, Touch Me for Patrice, Good for Patrice, Personal for Five Star Keel, a lot of Dev, Dev music, um, Shala Nyla Blackman's Pepper record, um, the Kess and Wizkid record that wasn't too long released. I've worked with almost everybody. And um, I could tell you that this thing is so amazing. It's, it's so amazing to be able to come up with something here and, and create this thing that affects the lives of people. And if you feel any way close to how I feel about music, then you're not going to want to give up on it. You're going to want to find a way to make it work, reach out to people, have conversations, talk. I am not a beast. I am open to have a conversation if need be. I'm sure we could work out some. I am extremely busy though. So, you know, don't dig a hard if I don't respond, you know, and I'll always make myself um, reachable you know, for the sake of the art form, because um, the goal to me is bigger than myself. 
You know, I want quality to come out of Trinidad. I want Trinidad to have its own library of music that could shop to music supervisors and to the world. You know, so, you know, um, it is indeed a pleasure to be able to do this and to be able to share and to help in any way. So I am I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here with you guys today and to just talk and to share. So in closing, I'd like to reiterate that there are many ways to make a living as a songwriter, but you have to be serious about the value that you put on what you do and that, is it re that it's reflected in how you treat it from a business perspective, right? It's all possible, but you must be willing to do the work, but that's in your mind and your attitude, how you treat it. Leave me alone and stop butting in the conversations, right? So, yeah, so I hope that what I, what I spoke about was helpful, you know? Um, yeah, so thank you, Nia, thank you, Stephen, thank you, Soraya, thank you, Mariella, um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Kareem, everybody that was a part, Aaron, Shakila, um, Ray. Guys, Ray is my artist and she's here. She's supportive. Say hi to Ray. <laughs> um, Lisa, everybody. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Music Titi, for the opportunity. And I, I think we have a lot of great things coming in the future. And I, I could see that Trinidad has a, a bright future in terms of music. Because I could tell you this, guys, the talent is here, right? I told the Spotlight artists last week that I've been in many rooms with a bunch of talented people and people making a lot of money from this thing. And Trinidad, I could say confidently that Trinis are some of the most talented people that I've ever met. The difference is we don't have the opportunities and we're not in a location for the opportunities. Because sometimes it's really just, you have to be there and you have to be on the ground. And that's why I make the trips to LA and New York because you have to be around the industry. You have to be there, you have to network. And sometimes out of sight is out of mind. So I, I've been going for years and working with the people that I work with to basically create that link and that network and you have to be able to foster relationships because networking is indeed a must you have to and forget networking it's about relationships building authentic genuine relationships don't nag don't seem desperate but it's necessary to build long-lasting relationships a man would quicker do business with who he knows than who he doesn't know and who he knows mightn't even be as talented as the person he does know. But because he knows you, you know. But it is possible, guys. You have to find ways. You have to be creative. You have to implement the right set of business practices and social etiquette sometimes. So thank you. It has been a pleasure. I didn't even get to take a photo of this whole thing. and But I really enjoyed it. And I think, um, I think you guys you know, have been a great, great, great um, company for me today. I appreciate you all. I just taken a picture of the screen, guys. And I like the fact that, you know, we were comfortable. So thank you for making me comfortable. Thank you for forgiving me for my late start. I hope that, yeah, everybody enjoyed it. So take care. God bless you guys. And we shall link pretty, pretty soon. All right. Take care.